Welcome to BTC Radio Audiobook and ASMR, the ultimate destination for audiobook enthusiasts and literary explorers. If you're someone who finds solace in the symphony of words, if you yearn to get lost in captivating tales spun by master storytellers, then you've just discovered your haven. Join us on a journey where pages come to life through the power of sound, where every narrative nuance and character emotion is vividly painted in the theater of your mind. From timeless classics to contemporary gems, our channel is a sanctuary for those who believe that stories are meant to be heard. So, sit back, close your eyes, and let the magic of words transport you to distant worlds, one audiobook at a time. The Log of the Tortuga, August the 4th, 1841. As Captain Duval's fever shows no sign of abating, I remain in command of the ship. The captain's illness is merely the latest misfortune to befall us. After leaving the coast of Borneo, we were battered for days by storms, and now we find ourselves becalmed in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The men, already unsettled by our strange cargo, have become convinced that there is a curse upon the ship. Although I rarely pay heed to such superstition, I cannot entirely escape the conviction that they may be correct. Captain Duval! It's uh, Jacques, sir. Jacques? Uh, the, the ship has started moving again. Oh, I thought you should know. You're a good man, Jacques. I shan't see the end of our voyage. Oh, nonsense. How is our friend, down in the hold? He grows more savage by the day. He attacked one of the men this morning. Why did I do it, Jack? Why did I bring him on board? You thought you could make money from him, sir. He's your responsibility now. You must decide what to do with him. Yes, sir. You cross yourself, Jack. You're frightened, I see. In all candor, sir, I'm frightened to death. It's the devil himself we're taking to France. The Murders in the Rue Morgue by Edgar Allan Poe. Dramatized by Stephen Sheridan. Noisy, crowded, and unclean. I'm sorry. Every time I visit Paris, the more disagreeable it seems. Oh, perhaps you should stay at home. <laughs> I only wish I could. But sadly, I'm obliged to earn a living. Personally, I consider Paris the most beautiful city on earth. Ah, that's because you see it through the eyes of a young man. It's because I see it through the eyes of an artist. Oh? I'm a painter, sir. Or at least I hope to be when I finish my studies. Oh, you should have said so earlier. I hadn't realized that I was sharing a coach with someone special. Oh, now you're making fun of me. No, no, far from it. As a mere businessman, I have always held artists in the highest regard. Oh, my father's a businessman. I wish he was of your opinion. Uh, uh, I see we've almost reached the coach house. Oh. Perhaps you'll allow me to buy you a meal. That's uncommonly generous of you, sir. Well, I'm afraid I shall be spending the next few days dining with lawyers and stockbrokers. Oh. Sharing a meal with a man of culture would be a rare and unexpected privilege. So, my young friend, you've come to Paris seeking inspiration. Oh, well, I've spent most of my life in a small Provence village. It's very agreeable in its way, but I've grown tired of having nothing to sketch but trees and fields. <laughs> Have you decided where you'll be staying? Uh, my father has granted me a small allowance. I shall probably rent a room at a local inn. Oh, I doubt if you'll find such an environment conducive to artistic endeavour. Mm. Perhaps you'll permit me to do you another favour. Oh, really, Monsieur Moreau, you've been more than generous already. 
I have a friend who owns a house in the Rue du Nord de Saint-Germain. He's a chevalier, no less. The son of one of the most illustrious families in France. Oh? Unfortunately, a series of calamities have rendered him all but destitute. Accordingly, he's obliged from time to time to take in lodgers. His situation must be desperate indeed. Uh, he's a strange man in many ways, but he possesses a rare and brilliant intellect. I have a feeling you'll like him. Lodging with a chevalier? It's an intriguing suggestion. If you take my advice, you'll visit him at once. Paris offers few experiences more extraordinary than residing with Auguste Dupin. My God, look at this place. It's crumbling to dust. Yes? I'm sorry to trouble you. Uh, my name is Jean-Marc Roger. I'm here at the prompting of a mutual acquaintance. If we owe him some money, I'm afraid he must wait. Oh, as a matter of fact, I've come to inquire about renting a room. Oh. Oh, forgive me. Oh, whatever must you think. Oh, really, it's of no consequence. My brother normally deals with such matters... Please, Monsieur Roger, won't you come in? Oh, yes, thank you. Fry and warm. Ah, save up for a new barometer. Who is it? Elaine, August. There's a young gentleman to see you. Uh, monsieur? A young gentleman with a crooked collar. I beg your pardon. Straighten it, will you? If you really, wish. August, that was intolerably rude. My sister often despairs of my behaviour, I'm afraid, but I have a positive mania for order and neatness. Monsieur Roger has just arrived in Paris. He's looking for a room. Oh. <laughs> Don't pull a face. We must have some money. Our creditors are becoming impatient. Who sent you here, Monsieur Roger? A merchant by the name of Henri Moreau. Moreau? I know him well. An excellent fellow and surprisingly cultured for a man of commerce. My brother once rendered him a great service. Oh? He'd been unjustly accused of a crime. I use my modest gifts to establish his innocence. Your modest gifts? Tell me, Monsieur Roger, do you keep regular hours? I'm sorry? You rise early and retire at a decent time? I'm afraid not. I love the night and rarely go to bed before daybreak. Dear me. Have I said the wrong thing? My brother is teasing you. He keeps exactly the same hours himself. What about society? Do you seek out the companionship of others? Not if I can help it. I'm somewhat solitary by nature. So am I. You show sure promise, Monsieur Roger. Uh, really, sir? You're behaving as though I've applied for a position in your household. Not afraid to speak your mind, I see. Better and better. Do you play chess? It's my favourite pastime. And do you have any talent for it? I was once considered something of a prodigy. I knew it. You have the brow of a natural player. I shall look forward to facing you across the checkered board. You wish me to stay, then? Of course I wish you to stay. <laughs> You're to be congratulated. My brother is rarely so enthusiastic about new lodgers. I must warn you, I'm far from wealthy. You can work out the details of your rent later, Monsieur Roger. Hélène will show you to your room. Thank you. Oh, and Monsieur Roger. Yes? Your collar is still a little crooked. Straighten it again. Rousseau, the man is such an idiot. Must you read at the dinner table? Huh? Sorry? Monsieur Roger will think you have no manners. Monsieur Roger has been here a week. He already knows I have no manners. I must congratulate you on this evening's meal, Mademoiselle Dupin. You excelled yourself. Thank you. It's a pity about the peas, though. The peas? There were only 29 on my plate. You didn't count them again. I like 30, you know that. Madame Tenadier always managed it. Madame Tenadier was a professional cook. If you hadn't spent her wages on a rare first edition, she might still be with us. Why does it matter if there are 29 peas on your plate or 30? I must have order and precision. If I'm to think clearly, my surroundings need to mirror my mind. Oh, Adolf's a little early. Is my appearance too dreadful? Oh, you look positively radiant. Doesn't she, Dupin? I expect so. Thank you, August. I can always rely on you to shower me with compliments. Who's Adolphe? Hélène's fiancé. He works at the local bank. I hadn't realized she was engaged. She has been for the last five years. Five years? Well, that's a very long time. Well, I can't be expected to manage on my own and 
Servants seem reluctant to stay. So until the situation can be properly remedied, Elaine prefers to remain here with me. She's clearly a remarkably accommodating young lady. Is that a butcher's bill I spy on the mantelpiece? Uh, yes, I believe so. Conceal it in a drawer, will you? I prefer not to advertise my reduced circumstances. Uh, yes, of course. You might also have the delicacy not to mention that you're currently paying me rent. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Monsieur Le Bon. How are you? Oh, all the better for seeing Elaine again. This is Monsieur Roger Adolf. He's a... a friend from Provence. Ah, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, ah, sir. Monsieur. So, Monsieur Le Bon, how will you and my sister be spending the evening? Adolf is taking me to see Les Huguenots. You have my sympathy. <laughs> Grand opera will never match the mathematical beauty of a Bach cantata. <laughs> You said he wouldn't approve, Elaine. <laughs> the answer, my dear Roger, is no. I beg your pardon? I'm sure Monsieur Le Bon wouldn't object if you wanted to paint my sister. How the devil did you know I was thinking that? It was obvious. Or to a mind reader, perhaps. Must I now number telepathy among your accomplishments? Telepathy? I saw you glance at your fingers which are smeared with charcoal. This brought to mind your calling as an artist. You glance at Hélène and then at the portrait hanging behind her on the wall. Clearly, you were thinking that she might be a suitable subject for such a study. Then, however, Monsieur Le Bon spoke and you frowned. It's not difficult to deduce that you were concerned he would object to your proposal. Astonishing, my dear Dupin. Absolutely astonishing. Perhaps now you understand why I attach such importance to order and precision. A man who has trained his mind to think clearly can penetrate any secret in the world. Look up a little. That's right. I'm longing to see the finished portrait. Oh, you may have a considerable wait. These are just my preliminary sketches. Oh, the door. Uh, there's no need to jump up. I'm sure your brother can answer it. Yes, of course. <laughs> I expect you must find him very strange. Oh, uh, well, he's a character. I like characters. I'm afraid our family's misfortunes have borne down heavily on him over the years. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Our parents had most of their wealth confiscated during the terror. When Argus lost the rest in speculation, he seemed to give up on life. That's a great pity. He's clearly a man of exceptional talent. Mm. He became terrified of further calamities befalling us. That's why he's chosen to shut himself away. He thinks that by leading a life of order and reason, he can protect himself from the forces of chaos. Oh, he can't, though, can he? No, Monsieur Roger. None of us can. An intriguing business, my dear Jordan. A most intriguing. There you are, Dupin. I thought you might like to see my sketches of Elaine. Uh, <clears throat> oh, forgive me. I hadn't realized that you had company. Come in, Roger. I'd like you to meet Inspector Jourdain. Uh, how do you do, sir? Monsieur. The inspector is one of the Surete's most gifted officers. Uh, Faint praise, I know, but uh, praise nonetheless. I trust that nothing untoward has happened. Uh, far from it, sir. I occasionally come to the Chevalier with especially strange or perplexing cases. Oh, he possesses a rare talent for deduction. So I've observed. The inspector has brought me an especially delicate matter this evening. A letter has been stolen from a member of the royal household. Really, Dupin? I told you that in confidence. We can talk freely in front of Roger. His discretion is legendary. Uh, I, I trust that that's correct. Do you have any ideas to the identity of the thief? Only one man would dare perpetrate such a crime. Ducol, the Minister of the Interior... I was at school with him. He used to cheat at marbles, as I recall. If the contents of the letter should become known, a terrible scandal would ensue. It's vital we discover where Ducol has concealed it. How do you know he hasn't passed it on to a third party? He can only use it to exert influence over the Crown whilst it remains in his possession. Have you searched his rooms and offices? Oh, on three separate occasions. We've all but taken them apart, but the letter was nowhere to be found. Perhaps he's concealing it on his person. Uh, we thought of that. Last night, two of my men, disguised as footpads, stopped and searched him, but it was all to no avail. And so, in desperation, you've turned to me. I can think of no one more likely to find it. Does the Prefect of Police know of my involvement? Uh, I thought it better not to tell him. 
Oh, he's a petty man and jealous of your past successes. Quite so. Do you think you'll be able to help? Call again tomorrow. I must have an answer. Call again tomorrow. Very well, then. I'll leave the matter in your hands. Good night, sir. Uh, good night. I don't know about you, but I fancy a game of chess. But what about Inspector Jordan's mystery? Chess first, mysteries later. And I'm not missing out on an evening's entertainment for a man who cheats at marbles. You're sure it's all there? Uh, you needn't concern yourself, dear lady. I counted it personally. Who is it? Adolf Le Bon, sir. You asked to see me. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, Le Bon. This is Madame L'Espagne and her daughter, two of the bank's most valued customers. <laughs> Pleased to make your acquaintance. <laughs> Madame L'Espagne has decided to withdraw 4,000 gold francs from her account. She needs someone to carry them to her apartment in the Rue Morgue. I suggested hailing a cab, but Mother refused. Cabs cost money. The walk will do us good. Now, pick up our gold servant. We'll be on our way. I, I don't think I've ever visited this part of the city before. Oh, I hate the neighbourhood. There are fights and disturbances almost every night. Surely you could afford to move to somewhere a little more fashionable. But, but that's why I keep telling Mother, but... She won't part with a sou. Well, that? What are you saying? Nothing, Mother. Oh, this is where we live. I hope you're feeling energetic, Monsieur Le Bon. Our apartment is on the fourth floor. Put the money down on that table. I hadn't realised that 4,000 francs were quite so heavy. You must be exhausted. May I offer you a drink? Oh, no water. You can't have spirits. A glass of water would be very acceptable. See who that is, Camille. Yes, Mother. Uh, I thought I heard you come in. Where's my rent? What's that? It was due up on the first. Why haven't I been paid? I'm a poor old woman. I need more time. One more week. That's all you have. And if I don't see any money by then, you'll be out on the street. Oh, Mother, what was the point of that? You're far too eager to spend my money. Waiting a week will do him no harm. I'll fetch you that water, Monsieur Le Bon. Thank you. I suppose you find my behaviour shocking. It's none of my business how you behave. That's right, it's not. You can drink your water and be on your way. Whoever set this type deserves to be flogged. Inspector Jourdain is here, Dupin. Is it my imagination, Jourdain? Or is newsprint becoming smaller? Uh, I beg your pardon? If I'm to read this evening's Gazette, I shall need my spectacles. Oh, hang the Gazette. Tell me what progress you've made. When I have my spectacles. Oh, I'll fetch them, Dupin. I don't want you to fetch them. I want the inspector to do it. Oh, for pity's sake. They're in the top drawer of my desk. <sighs> That's right. I sometimes think you're the most aggravating man who ever lived. I can't find any spectacles. Look again. Just a minute. No. It's impossible. The letter. The purloined letter. I hope you'll forgive my little deception. I've never been able to resist a touch of the histrionic. This is beyond all comprehension. How did you come by it? You're a clever man, Jordan. But you're too cunning for your own good. Huh? Ducol, on the other hand, shares my passion for simplicity. You're not making sense. It's often said that the best place to hide a tree is in a forest. Where better, then, to hide a letter than in a letter rack? A letter rack? You naturally assume that Ducol would conceal it in some elaborate hiding place. Anticipating this, he did the exact opposite. Whilst you were carefully dismantling his furniture and searching behind his wallpaper, the letter was lying in plain view upon his desk. Oh, astonishing. And you managed to guess all that from what Inspector Jordan told you? I never guess, Roger. Knowing Ducol's character, it was simple to deduce what he'd done. Simple for you, perhaps. To confirm my theory, I paid the minister a visit. 
Sure enough, as we sat reminiscing about our school days, I spotted the letter tucked between two others. <laughs> Can you believe the gall of the man? Ducal is far from hospitable, but he eventually felt obliged to offer me a small cognac. Whilst he was pouring it, I substituted the letter for a blank sheet of paper folded in an identical <laughs> manner. <laughs> Poor old Ducal. Imagine his surprise when he discovers what's happened. I think we can safely anticipate that his days of high office are numbered. You've rendered your country a great service, Dupin. I can't thank you enough. Then please don't try. A small reward from the public purse, on the other hand, would be more than welcome. <laughs> it's no more than you deserve, sir, but there is one problem. Oh? Before I can do anything, I shall have to persuade the prefect of police. Give Dupin a reward? I've never heard of such a thing. He did recover the letter, sir. <laughs> That was merely a lucky guess. I'd already deduced for myself where the letter was hidden. Uh, uh, had you, sir? You kept quiet about that. I'm not sure I care for your tongue, Jordan. I'm only thinking of your reputation. Oh, that's very good of you, sir. If the royal household discover that you discuss their secrets with a member of the public, you'll be ruined. That's as may be, sir, but I'm not comfortable about taking credit for solving the case. Then I'm inclined to agree with you. It might be best for all concerned if I say I recovered the letter. Y you, sir? I am the prefect of police, Jordan. It's not inconceivable that I'm still capable of solving the occasional case. If you say so, sir. All that anyone need know is that I saved the day after careful investigation of the facts. The name of Dupin is not to be associated in any way with the matter. And under no circumstances whatsoever... Is he to be given a reward? Dupin, are you in there? Come in, Roger. I wanted to tell you how impressed I was by your work this evening. It was a minor victory against the forces of anarchy and disorder. But the battle can never truly be won. You seem a trifle somber. We're reasoning creatures, Roger. We think we can guard against misfortune, but we're mistaken. We can no more control our lives than we can prevent the sun going down. And who knows what terrors may visit us during the night. You're not counting your money again. That bank manager didn't look entirely trustworthy. You can't be too careful, Camille. If you don't intend spending it, I don't see why you bothered withdrawing it in the first place. Banks can collapse, my girl. I shall sleep more soundly knowing that it's close by. Shh. What is it? I thought I heard something. My God. Robbers. Quickly, girl. Check the other room. Come on. Open up. All right. I'm just coming. What do you want? You're late with your rent. Uh, it's gone midnight. You're never in when I call earlier. Uh, look, girl. Uh, I haven't been making much at my shop just lately. Oh, excuses, excuses. You're worse than Madame Le Spanier. You must give me more time. Oh, was ever a man cursed with more selfish tenants? You won't be happy until you ruin me. <laughs> what the devil was that? It came from Madame Le Spanier's room. Oh, oh, sweet mother of God. What's happening up there? Madame Le Spanier? Are you in there? Madame Espanier, are you all right? We'll have to break down the door. We'll do no such thing. I have a key. What's the meaning of all this commotion, you... you... Oh, my God. Quickly. Out of my way. I, I think I'm going to be sick. Dupin, have you seen this morning's gazette? Shh. Oh, it's no use trying to talk to August when he's communing with Bach. I haven't been practicing as assiduously as I should. My playing has become a little mechanical. Forgive me, but a crime has occurred that you may find of interest. Crimes are perpetrated every day. I can't concern myself with all of them. I'd like to hear the details. Oh, thank you, Mademoiselle Dupin. And I'd like to hear them in silence. 
really, Elaine. Almost crushed my fingers. Oh, what does the Gazette say? Uh, horrific events in the Rue Morgue. <clears throat> At a little after midnight, the inhabitants of a lodging house in the Rue Morgue were awakened by a series of terrible cries. Upon investigation, it was discovered that the screams were emanating from an apartment occupied by a Madame L'Espanier and her daughter, Camille. So far, so conventional. The landlord of the building, upon entering the apartment, was greeted by a terrible sight. The furniture was in a state of the wildest disarray, and upon the floor there lay a razor and several tresses of thick grey hair. Tresses of hair, a colourful touch. Most shocking of all, the walls, floor and even the ceiling were spattered with vast quantities of fresh human blood. Oh, how dreadful. Strange to relate, however, despite the apparent violence done to them, no trace of either Madame L'Espanier or her daughter has yet to be found. No bodies? How curious. Does the Gazette say who has been appointed to investigate the matter? Uh, yes. It's our old friend, Inspector Jourdain. An excellent man in his way. You were quite right, though, Roger. The case does interest me. Thank you, Dupin. The next edition of the Gazette is published at noon. I should like to hear if it contains any further details. Until then, however... Yes? I propose returning to Bach. So, gentlemen, what can you tell me about Madame L'Espanier and her daughter? Well, they were both very quiet, almost recluses, in fact. Mm -hmm. And they claim to have no money. No money? Look at all these gold coins scattered about the floor. <sighs> can you think of anyone who may have wished to harm them? The devil must have come from, sir. It's the only explanation. Well, I'm hoping there's a less fanciful solution. Oh, can you think of anything you've forgotten to tell me? But we did hear a voice, sir, as we were coming up the stairs. Oh? Hmm. It was very low and strange. And it wasn't speaking French. Ah. I think it may have been Dutch. Dutch? Or possibly German. Oh. Yes, yeah, German. It was definitely German. I see. German, indeed. It wasn't German. It was Russian. I'd recognise that accent anywhere. <sighs> Dutch, German, Russian. You're not being of much help. Well, we're doing our best, Inspector. We are still both trembling uh, with fear. Would you mind putting out that pipe, sir? Hmm? Oh, forgive me. Uh, and what have you done with the match? Well, I've thrown it into the grate. Pick it up, will you? We can't have you contaminating the scene of the crime. Uh, when do you think you'll be finished? I shall have to advertise for a new tenant. Oh, well, I... What's oh, the matter? The chimney. Eh? Oh, my God. Camille! Really, these interruptions are intolerable. Oh, I'm sorry, but the second edition of the Gazette has just been published. Oh, ha have there been any further developments in the Rue Morgue? There have indeed. They found a body. Oh? It's the daughter, Camille, and Dupin. You've never heard anything more strange. She'd been forced up the chimney. What? <laughs> forced up the chimney? She was discovered hanging oh. upside down. Apparently, it took two strong men to dislodge her. An extraordinary manifestation of violence. Uh, upon examination, the body was discovered still to be warm. The face was marked with severe scratches, and about the throat were bruises and the deep indentations of fingernails, oh. suggesting that the deceased had been throttled to death. It's horrible. This is no ordinary crime, Roger. That much is clear. I'm afraid Inspector Jourdain will have his work cut out. I don't think I've ever seen such discoloration of a human face. And look at her tongue. It's been partially bitten through. Hmm. Anything else? No, there's a bruise on the pit of her stomach. In my opinion, it was it's caused by a knee. You're right, sir. You seem a trifle pale. Uh, you must forgive me, Inspector. But in all my years as a physician, I have never encountered such violence. Whoever perpetrated these crimes must have had the strength of a Hercules. It's been What is it, man? What's happened? I, I will add you to the yard for a breath of fresh air. Oh, my God, sir. It's Madame L'Espanier. Dupin. Roger, am I to be allowed to claim peace? Or has the final edition of the Gazette been published? I have it in my hand. 
Oh, very well, then. Ruin another recital. Oh, stop pretending you're angry, August. You know you're as anxious to learn what's happened as I am. It seems they've discovered the body of Madame L'Espagne. I'm relieved to hear it. There's nothing more untidy than a crime with a missing element. Apparently, she was found in the backyard. Her throat had been so thoroughly cut that when she was lifted, her head all but came off. Oh, this crime grows more macabre by the hour. Have the authorities been able to ascertain the motive for the killings? According to the Gazette, they're still in the dark. I doubt if Inspector Jordan will be able to enlighten them. He's an able enough man in his way, but I fear a crime that is quite so grotesque will prove beyond him. I suppose you'd be able to solve it in ten minutes. I wouldn't dream of making so immodest a claim. Oh? I'd expect it to take me at least (laughs) fifteen. Well? I'm sorry? Do you intend to offer the inspector your services? He knows where I live. On the whole, however, I'd rather he chose not to involve me. Why ever not? Solving the occasional puzzle is an amusing diversion, but doing it often requires energy. And energy, my dear Roger, is the one quality I lack. Madness. Madness. Where's the sense of it? Ah, Chaudan. Here you are. Good evening, sir. Don't you stand up with the prefect of police centers? Uh, Forgive me, sir. Uh, I've been awake since dawn. Have you seen the newspapers? They contain nothing but details of the crimes in the room all. I know, sir. They're fanning the flames of public panic. That's why it's vital we make an arrest. Any delay could be highly damaging to my reputation. I'm doing my best, sir, but the evidence makes no sense. I don't want excuses, Jordan. I want results. Have you managed to ascertain how the murderer left the scene of the crime? He couldn't have used the door, sir. Otherwise, he would have passed the landlord on the stairs. He must have climbed through the window, then. I'm afraid not, sir. The windows had all been nailed shut. And anyway, Madame L'Espagne's apartment is on the fourth floor. I take it you've checked for secret passages and trapdoors? Yes, sir. There were none to be discovered. This is absurd. There must be an explanation. You're not going home till you've found it. But, sir, I'm exhausted. You're not working alone. Hmm. I shall be giving the matter due consideration whilst I'm dining with my wife. Uh, That's very inspiring, sir. Uh, But I wonder if we might benefit from some additional assistance. Oh? Uh, Well, there is someone who specialises in these types of crime. Uh, Perhaps we ought to consult... Yes? Uh, It doesn't matter, sir. I hope you weren't about to suggest involving that infernal meddler, Dupin. He does possess a remarkable talent for deduction, sir. I will not countenance involving that man in any more police investigations. Do I make myself clear, Jordan? Yes, sir. Perfectly clear. Good. Now get back to work and come up with a solution. I'll do my best, sir. You will not do your best, Jordan. You will succeed. If you haven't made an arrest by this time tomorrow, I give you my word you'll pay with your job. Your move, Roger. Just a moment. I'm thinking. You weren't about to move your bishop there. Why not? No reason. After due consideration, I've decided to move my knight instead. Very good, Roger. Very cunning. Thank you, Dupin. Checkmate. What? You must learn to defend your king. This is hopeless. I never seem to win. You mustn't despair. Your game is improving immeasurably. It's taken me almost 20 minutes to beat you this morning. August! Helene, whatever's the matter? It's Adolphe. Here, come and sit down. What's happened to Adolphe? He's been arrested. Arrested? On what charge? It's madness, absolute madness. They're saying he committed the murders in the Rue Morgue. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not convinced he's guilty. You allow yourself to doubt too much, Jordan. That's always been your greatest failing. Yes, sir. I, on the other hand, know how to act decisively. That's why I'm the prefect of police, and you're still a lowly inspector. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Bernardier? I'm sorry to disturb you, but there's a gentleman here to see you, Ed. Oh? Do you mind if I sit down? To pan. It's a considerable walk to your office, and I'm more than a little weary. Uh, thank you, Bernardier. That will be all. Oh, very good, sir. What do you want, Dupin? 
I'm an extremely busy man. I'd like to know who authorized the arrest of Adolphe Le Bon. As Chaudin seemed unable to act, I did. I thought as much. You know, of course, that he's entirely innocent. I know nothing of the sort. Le Bon had an obvious motive. Oh? He delivered 4,000 gold francs to Madame Laspanier's apartment. Clearly, he returned later that night, hoping to steal them. And when he was interrupted, I suppose he turned to violence. Precisely. Le Bon is a far from athletic young man. Do you really think he has the strength to perpetrate two such brutal murders? Um, I've already pointed that out to the prefect, sir. Uh, he maintains, however, that a frightened man is capable of almost anything. Have you managed to ascertain how he was able to escape from the apartment? That remains a mystery at present. I have no doubt, however, that it will become clear during his trial. You must realize how little evidence you have against him. If you try to prosecute, you'll be laughed out of court. And what would you have me do? Let him go without charge? I doubt if you're capable of anything quite so reasonable. But you might consider releasing him into my custody. Uh, why are you so interested in him, Dupin? He's engaged to my sister. Uh, and you expect me to release him into your custody? You must think I'm a fool. I try not to fly in the face of public opinion. As the Chevalier is here, sir, perhaps we might allow him to view the scene of the crime? What on earth do you imagine this impudent mountebank will be able to tell you? He possesses a rare talent for observation, sir. He's a member of the public, Jordan. I, on the other hand, am a trained detective. My powers of observation are a hundred times greater than his. Oh, how many stairs lead up to your office? I beg your pardon? You must have climbed them a thousand times. How many are there? Fetch a couple of officers, Jordan. I want this popping jay thrown from the building. There's no need for violence. I'm more than capable of leaving without assistance. Then kindly do so. I hope you'll remember this conversation when you're being pilloried in the newspapers. I certainly shall. Oh, and by the way... What? Exactly 12 stairs lead up to your office. A satisfyingly even number. So, Dupin, what do you intend to do next? Pour myself a glass of wine... I'm exhausted. You can't leave poor Adolf languishing in prison. What do you expect me to do? Apprehend the murderer myself? Well, why not? You're more than capable of it. Be reasonable, Elaine. I should have married years ago, but I let you convince me you couldn't manage alone. You might at least repay me by trying to help. I can't run around Paris looking for clues. I don't have the energy. Oh, you don't have the energy. God, you're pathetic. Please, Hélène, you're embarrassing Roger. You could do anything if you set your mind to it. But you've chosen to idle away your life, shut off from the world. I thank God our parents aren't alive to see it. Hélène, come back. They'd be ashamed, Auguste. Ashamed at what you've become. I'm sorry, Dupin. I'm sure she didn't mean it. But what if she did, Roger? What if she's right? Oh, she's upset. It's only to be expected. I sought to make my life calm and orderly by avoiding all engagement. Is it possible I've squandered it instead? Excuse me, Dupin. Inspector Jourdain. I hope I'm not interrupting. Your sister let me in. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you all right, Dupin? I'm fine, Inspector. Absolutely fine. I could lose my job for this, but I won't see an innocent man go to the scaffold. There's a carriage outside. I think it's time I took you to the Rue Morgue. Oh, we must start at the beginning, Inspector Jordan. Tell me about the voice heard emanating from Madame Lespani's apartment. There's not a great deal to say. We haven't even been able to ascertain what language it was speaking. The landlord and his tenant weren't able to make out a single recognizable word? No, sir. Would you find that peculiar? Peculiar? No matter what language the voice was speaking, it should have been possible to distinguish at least one or two words. You find that significant, do you? Yes, Roger. I find it very significant indeed. Here we are, gentlemen. The Rue Morgue. What a godforsaken neighborhood. Which is Madame Lespanier's apartment? She lived right up there, on the fourth floor. Hello, what's this at the bottom of the drainpipe? A length of ribbon. Uh, perhaps it belonged to one of the victims. I think not. Unless I'm mistaken, this was used by a sailor to tie back his pigtail. How on earth did you deduce that? It smells of the sea, and it has a very distinctive knot of the kind most commonly used by mariners. Do you mind if I keep it? Be my guest. Well, come along, then. Shall we go in? You're very energetic this evening, Dupin. 
I don't think I've ever seen you so lively. I spent too much of my life shut away from the world. My sister has shown me that. From now on, I have a new watchword. Action, my dear Jordan. Action! Here we are, gentlemen. <laughs> this oh. is where it happened. Oh, dear God, the whole room reeks of death. Uh, it's been left more or less as we found it. Madame Laspania's gold coins were scattered about the floor, I believe. That's right, sir. If Adolphe Le Bon intended to steal them, I doubt if he'd have left them behind. Yeah, well, that's all very well and good, Dupin, but if the killer didn't want money, what was his motive? It's impossible to say. I suggest, therefore, that we forget about it. Forget about the motive? You're familiar with the principle of Occam's razor? I've heard of it. If we're to reason clearly, we must cut away all extraneous matter. The killer's motive is irrelevant. He's no doubt left behind more than enough clues to enable us to identify him. I'd be glad if you could at least discover how he was able to escape from the room. He clearly couldn't have used the door. Mm. He would have been discovered on the stairway. And anyway, I believe the door had been locked from the inside. Correct. There are no secret passages or tunnels leading from the room. Therefore, by a process of elimination, we can deduce that he must have used one of the windows. But, but Dupin, the windows were all nailed shut. If that were the case, the killer would have had to vanish into thin air. Clearly, that's impossible. Therefore, the windows must only appear to have been nailed shut. Shall we examine them? Oh, please. Ah, I've seen this kind of window before. The sash contains a hidden spring that automatically fastens it. Someone passing through could have caused it to fall and shut itself behind him. But it couldn't have been open in the first place. It was na nailed shut, I know, I know. See for yourself. It won't budge. Let's examine its companion. Do either of you have a penknife? I have one here. Ah, thank you, Roger. Ah, as I thought. The nail in this window is broken just behind the head. Oh. Although the window appears to have been nailed shut, it can, as I will now demonstrate, be opened quite easily. Oh. Astonishing! Oh. Well, you've established how the killer escaped from the room, uh, but how on earth was he able to reach the ground from this height? There's a lightning rod embedded in the wall. Possibly the killer was able to swing upon it and reach the drain pipe. Uh, but, but, Dupin, that... Lightning rod is a, a good five feet away. Reaching it would require almost inhuman agility. Jordan! Come in, Monsieur le Prefect. Your timing couldn't be more apposite. We were just discussing inhuman creatures. Bernardier told me that you'd come here with Dupin, but I had to see it with my own eyes. I'm sorry I disobeyed your order, sir, but the Chevalier has already made great progress. I don't care. I won't be mocked by my own subordinates. Quite right. You can leave that to the rest of us. Get out, Dupin. Get out and don't come back. If I discover that you're continuing to meddle, I shall see to it personally that you're thrown in jail. Will you heed the prefect's warning? With victory so close at hand, Elaine would never forgive me. Oh, you think you know who committed the murders, then? The theory has started to form in my mind. I still have a great deal of work to do, though. Oh? I need to place an advertisement in a certain publication before it goes to press. And tomorrow morning, a visit to the Paris mortuary may be in order. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes, Roger. Oh. You can straighten your watch chain. You've draped it unevenly and it's begun to annoy. Good evening, Dupin. Ah, Roger, come in. I trust you found your visit to the mortuary instructive. I can't remember when I last spent a more agreeable morning. The dead are such relaxing company. <laughs> are you searching for something? Uh-huh. A book by Georges Cuvier. I'm sure I have a copy on my shelves. Uh, perhaps I can help. Uh, it's all right. I found it. Oh. An anthropological study of the East Indies. Clearly a gripping read. We must make haste. I'm expecting a guest. Oh? See what you make of this. What is it? A sketch of the finger marks found around Camille Lespanier's throat. I lack your artistic flair, but I've done my best. Is this sketch to scale? As near as I could make it. Well, good God, Dupin. The killer's hands must have been twice the size of a normal man's. You may also wish to examine this hank of hair. Where did you find it? Beneath Madame Lespanier's fingernails. So, what do you think? 
It's very coarse and fibrous. If I didn't know better, I'd say... Yes? I'd say it wasn't human. Shh! What is it? Turn down the lamp, Roger. I think I hear our visitor climbing the stairs. How are you, Dupin? Come in, my friend. Take a seat. The young lady said I'd find you up here. I saw your advertisement in the Seafarer's Journal. May I offer you some brandy, Monsieur... Jacques. Uh, Just call me Jacques. I enjoyed meeting your associate the other day. He's quite a lively fellow, isn't he? Do you have him here? As I said in my advertisement, he's currently quartered in the Rue Royale. My only concern is ensuring that he's returned to the people who care for him. I am very grateful to you, sir. I'll give you any reward within my power. Any reward within your power? Let me see. What would please me? I know. You can tell me all about your part in the murders in the Rue Morgue. What's this? Some sort of trick. Dupin, watch out. Put away your knife, Jacques. We know you're innocent. But if we're to help you, we must hear the truth. All right, sir. I'll tell you. In all candor, it's been weighing heavily on my conscience. This associate Dupin mentioned, is he the murderer? Yes, sir. What kind of man is he? An escaped lunatic? Dear Roger, have you yet to deduce the truth? The killer isn't a man at all. I beg your pardon? The killer's gruff, inarticulate voice, his strength, his agility, the size of his hands, the coarseness of his hair, even his apparent lack of motive. All these clues point in the same direction. The killer isn't a man, he is an animal. An animal? My guess would be one of the great apes of the East Indies, am I correct? Yes, sir. In every detail. Here. Gouvier has a drawing of one. Well, uh, I thought these creatures possessed a peaceable nature. This one didn't, sir. He was a brute. No doubt he suffered great provocation. Start your story at the beginning, my friend. Where did you find him? In Borneo, sir. I was the first mate on a cargo ship called the Tortuga. Did you visit Borneo with the express purpose of capturing an ape? No, sir. It was a whim of the captain's. When he saw the creature and its mate, he thought he could make money from them as novelties. The ape had a mate? Oh, yes, sir. But she died before we could bring her aboard. I don't think her companion ever forgave us. I'm not surprised. Oh, but he was a monster, sir. Vicious and cruel. Some of us thought he was the very devil himself. A pleasingly fanciful notion. I'm not so sure, sir. He seemed to bring bad luck with him. The ship was beset with problems, and three days before we reached home, the captain died of fever. What did you do when you returned to France? I brought the ape to Paris, sir. I thought I could sell him to a circus or fairground. Where on earth did you keep him? I have a couple of rooms in the Rue de Richelieu. I put some straw down in a large cupboard and I housed him in there. (laughs) Such conditions can hardly have improved his temper. Indeed they do not, sir. I needed a whip to control him at all. I want you to tell me precisely what happened on the night of the murders. I will, sir. It'll be a great relief to unburden myself. The dreadful events began at a little after eleven. I was returning early from a party organised by some of my shipmates. Entering my rooms, I was horrified to discover that the ape had broken out of his cupboard. My God! He'd often seen me shave and was standing before my mirror. In crude imitation, his face lathered up and a cutthroat razor in his hand. Get away! Get away from there! I tried to drive him back with the whip, but he pushed past me and, still carrying the razor, ran down the stairs and into the street. I chased him through one empty street after another until, finally, he stopped outside a grimy building in the Rue Morgue. Attracted by a light burning in a back window on the fourth floor, he began to scale the drain point. Using the lightning rod, he swung himself inside and vanished from view. Come back! I'm used to climbing rigging, so I managed to follow him up. I lacked the agility to reach the lightning rod, though, so I could only peer through another window, this one closed, and witnessed what happened. As soon as they saw him, the old woman and her daughter began to scream. This seemed to inflame him, and seizing the old woman by her hair, he cut her throat with the razor. 
The smell of blood excited him. He picked the old woman up and hurled her through the window into the yard below. He then turned his attention to the daughter. Seizing her by the throat, he began to throttle her. When he was satisfied that she was dead, he took her body and began cramming it into the chimney. Stop it! For pity's sake, stop it! I called to him, but he paid no heed. Sickened by what I'd seen, I climbed down the drain pipe and began to run. I didn't stop, sir, until I reached my rooms. What became of my ape, I neither knew nor cared. All that concerned me was getting away. Fascinating narrative. You've acted with great stupidity, but you're clearly innocent of these terrible crimes. Thank you, sir. I'm afraid my advertisement wasn't entirely accurate, however. The ape is still at large. My God. There's a small wooded area behind the room morgue. Unless I'm mistaken, that's where our fugitive is hiding. Meet me there in an hour and bring a net. Very good, sir. Roger, get in touch with the newspapers. Give them a full account of what we know. Where will you be? I think it's time I paid another visit to an old and trusted friend. How dare you come marching into my office again? Who do you think you are? You've handled this case with startling ineptitude, Monsieur le Prefect. But if you accompany me to the Rue Morgue, you may still be able to salvage your reputation. Jordan, have this man arrested. But, sir... Don't argue. Do as I say. A number of journalists will be there. A number of journalists? They're anxious to see the real murderer apprehended. If you join them, you may be able to turn the situation to your advantage. I suppose the Rue Morgue isn't that far away. You needn't arrest Dupin for the moment. Very good, sir. I'm not a man who's easily fooled. If the killer has somehow eluded me, he must be exceptionally clever. As you will discover, Monsieur Le Prefect, he's quite your intellectual equal in every way. A giant ape? You're saying the murders were committed by a giant ape? You sound a little incredulous. I brought the gentlemen of the press. I told them to wait over there in a clearing. If you're trying to make me look foolish in front of the newspapers, I'll flay you alive. What do you want us to do now, Dupin? Tell your men to stay in close formation and sweep through the wood. You heard him, man? Do as he says. Yes, sir. I'm supposed to be taking my wife to the theatre. I must have been mad to listen to you. Dupin, over there. Oh, my God. Look at the size of him. He's coming towards me. Shoot him, someone. Shoot him. Quickly, Jacques. The net. Very good, sir. Help me, man. Hold the beast down. Allow me to present Pongo Pygmaeus, Monsieur Le Prefect, the great ape of the East Indies and the true perpetrator of the murders in the Rue Morgue. Of course. I suspected something like this from the start. Adolf Bon was never a likely killer. We've got him, sir. He won't escape us now. I'd say we owe the Chevalier a great debt of gratitude. Wouldn't you agree, sir? Yes. You've done very well, Dupin. Very well. Perhaps a small reward from the public purse would be in order. We can discuss that later. But first things first, young man. Where did you say those journalists were waiting? It's disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. What's the matter, Roger? Have you seen this morning's Gazette? It credits the Prefect of Police with solving the case single-handed. You scarcely merit a mention. At least the Prefect has been persuaded to give me a reward. I'm quite happy to trade vulgar publicity for a little hard cash. I wish I could give you a reward as well, sir. It's because of you that I've been restored to liberty. As a matter of fact, Monsieur Le Bon, there is something you could do for me. Name it. Make my sister a good husband. I beg your pardon? I've allowed my selfishness to keep you apart for far too long. It's high time you married. <laughs> but August, how will you manage on your own? I'm not a child, Lillian, <laughs> and you're not my mother. Marry Le Bon, forget about me. After all that you've been through, it's what you deserve. I've almost finished my portrait of Elaine. I thought I might give it to her as a wedding present. A splendid suggestion, my dear Roger. Absolutely splendid. Well, 
Well, well, well. Moreau, my dear fellow. If it isn't Auguste Dupin and my young friend, the artist. This is a pleasant surprise, Monsieur Moreau. I hadn't expected to find you visiting the zoological gardens. Uh, no doubt, like me, you're trying to escape the noise of the filth of the streets. Actually, no. We've come to visit an old friend. An old friend? No doubt you read about the ape that ran amok in the Rue Morgue. Yes, of course. I thought I detected the Chevalier's hand in the creature's recapture. He's currently serving out his sentence behind some pleasingly neat bars in the monkey house. I thought you'd abandoned your obsession with neatness and precision. Far from it. The events of the past few days have merely established their importance. But surely, if we've learned anything, it's how vulnerable we are to chaos and disaster. You're mistaken, my friend. By using logic and reason, we've been able to cage a wild beast and restore order to the world. What do you think, Monsieur Moreau? Can cold calculation enable us to take control of our lives? Or are we, as I maintain, forever at the mercy of chance and misfortune? What do I think? Yes, I think that it's a very hot day and I could do with a drink. <laughs> An excellent suggestion and very well put. Come along, Roger. You heard what he said. Let's repair to a cafe and toast our success. In The Murders in the Rue Morgue by Edgar Allan Poe, dramatized by Stephen Sheridan, Malcolm Tierney was Dupin. Mark Bonner, Roger. David Timpson, Inspector Jourdain. Peter Ellis, the Prefect of Police. Tracy Wiles, Hélène. Tom Bevan, Adolf. Ryan Parr, Jacques. John Evitz, Moreau. And Jean Trend, Madame L'Espagne. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The pianist was Mike Sykes. The Murders in the Rue Morgue was a peer production for BBC Radio 4, directed by David Blount. <laughs>